God bless you, brothers and sisters. We thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to just talk about uh, these times of drought and scarcity uh, and how God enables believers to flourish like palm trees, even in the desert. How you can flourish like a palm tree, even in the desert. And I pray that God's blessings be upon you. Amen. Good morning, Pleasant Green. Good Let's do a little bit faster. Good morning, Pleasant Green. Good this next song says that can't nobody do me like Jesus. It says can't nobody do me like the Lord. It says can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. And if that's your testimony, we love it if you clap your hands with us. If you found that there's not a friend like Jesus, we love it if you stood with us. If you found that there's not a friend like Jesus, you can rock with us and sing with us as we sing this real simple song that says, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't nobody say, do me, do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Say, he's, he's my, he's my friend. Let's do that again as a whole church. Can't nobody say, do me. Whoa, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Whoa, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my, he's my, he's my friend. Somebody said he picked me up, picked me up, and he turned me around. Whoa, picked me up and turned me around. Yes, he did. Picked me up and turned me around. He's, he's my, he's my friend. Let's do that again. Say he picked me up and he turned me around. Oh, pick me up and turn me. Yes, he did. He picked me up and turned me around. Say, healed my body and told me to run on. Yeah, healed my body and told me to run on. Yeah, healed my body and told me to run on. He's my friend. Yes, he is. Let's go back to the top and say, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yes, can't nobody. One more time, say, can't nobody, nobody say, do me like Jesus. Like Whoa, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Yes, can't nobody say, do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Yeah. Let's see if you all can follow. Say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yes, can't nobody do Yes, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Say he's my friend. Yeah. Let's try that again. Say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Ooh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. One more time, say, oh, can't nobody do me like 
like Jesus. Yes, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yeah, he my friend. Tragedy. without homes living out in the streets the drug habit some say they just can't beat muggers and robbers no place seems to be safe but you've been my protection You've been my protection. You've been my protection. Every, 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 every step of the way. I got to say, thank you, Lord. I got to say, thank you, Lord.
If you would, brothers and sisters, let us go to the Word of God. Uh, I think during this season and during this time, uh, it is helpful to go to the hymnal of the Bible. Let's go to Psalm, uh, the 92nd increment, and we'll look at the 12th through the 15th verses. 92, Psalm 92, uh, the 12th through the 15th verses. And there you will find words um, similar to these. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says this, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit, even in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Brothers and sisters, if you would, I would just like to speak with you for just a little while about flourishing in the desert. I think it's important, brothers and sisters, that as we go through this time of quarantine, just to encourage us to know that we can flourish even in these times uh, of drought, even in these times of uncertainty, and even in these times where we are sure, unsure, brothers and sisters. So I just want to speak to you for just a little while about flourishing in the desert. Brothers and sisters, as we consider this text, we consider this text, we see that the psalmist opens up with a call to praise God in the morning and to praise God in the evening. And I share with you brothers and sisters that that's something that we ought to learn how to do is how to praise God in the morning and praise God in the evening. Tell God that God is God even when you wake up and God is God even when you go to sleep because we serve a God who neither slumbers nor sleep. God is able and he's a watching God and he does not slumber or sleep. The psalmist implies that God is worth and worthy of our admiration at every occasion in life. God is worthy of our praise at every interval in life. God is worthy of our praises during every season of our lives, at every spell in our lives. We are to recognize the power, the presence, and the provision of God. Might I suggest to you that whatever time you are in, God is still worthy to be praised. I'm about to shout by myself today because I bless God that even in times uh, of heartache, even in times of distress, even in times where you perhaps may not be able to see your way through, God is able and God still is on the throne. The psalmist sings because God is granting God's presence to him. God is granting God's provision to her. God is giving providence to them even in a desert season. He composes, uh, this psalmist composes this beautiful ballad. And to uh, the discerning eye, the psalmist provides a treasure of theological input and insight because what he helps us to discern is that even in arid places, even in desert districts, even when we are dehydrated in a dehydrated disposition, God 
still reigns and God is even still able to provide rain and sustenance for your life. Brothers and sisters, even uh, in what you may deem to be a drought, even in what you may deem to be a spiritual desert, God is yet able to pour out upon you a fresh anointing. Allow me to encourage you today that whatever your desert is, God is a supply even when you don't have. God is a supply even when you don't have friends. Even in the lack of friends, God can be a comforter. Even when there is a lack of finances, we can trust in the word of God. And the word of God says that he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God can even in the lack of finances, God will supply and he'll give you more than what you need. Whether scarcity comes uh, about by cuts on the job, whether scarcity comes because the coronavirus won't allow you to go back to work to make a decent living for your family. What I suggest to you today is that brothers and sisters, that if you trust in God, God will supply all of your needs according to how rich he is in Christ Jesus. As I stand at the opening of this text, and I discover a few things that emerge from the text. Uh, and brothers and sisters, it is my responsibility to share these particular consultations with you. And then I'll bid you do. Firstly, what the sermonic song seeks to say is, number one, you are created to flourish. If you are a child of God, you are are created to flourish. God made you to be a victor. God made you to flourish even in the face of dehydration. When I look at the word flourish in the text, I immediately developed a preconceived vision of a beautiful paradise. As most of us are used to seeing uh, as in the text, the palm trees that adorn the decor uh, or the decor, rather, brothers and sisters of a beautiful Disneyland wonderland. The text nearly tempts us to assume that these trees only grow in blissful places. These trees, perhaps, if you read the text, it tempts the reader to believe that these trees only grow when things are going well. The text, attempts, uh, the, the text tempts us to assume that these trees only grow, brothers and sisters, where the breeze continues to blow, where the stressfulness of life can be expunged by hanging out in a hammock or kicking your feet up and drinking uh, lemonade in the shade. The text all, almost prompts us to shout because it is probably for many of us saying that brothers and sisters that we only get to a place where we desire uh, or we desire the peaks of life. The peaks that offer praises and never the pits of life that offer opportunity for growth. On the fact that palm trees are not supposed to grow in the desert. And brothers and sisters, again, I almost, in the privacy of my own praying ground, I almost wanted to shout prematurely and say to you in the virtual world today, that God expects his people to grow in unexpected places. That, that shouted me in the presence of my own praying ground, brothers and sisters. And I mean, it would make 
for a great sermon. I mean, uh, it, it would shout us, brothers and sisters, it places us uh, uh, where uh, we would shout or it places us in a particular position, brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, we have to shout when, uh, brothers and sisters, we are somewhere where we are to thrive. I mean, if we are places where we're not su supposed to thrive, things uh, that we go through that we are not supposed to get anything out of despite the adverse circumstances, despite the severe struggles and the unrelenting pressures of life. God expects us to mature in faith. God expects us to expand in vision. God expects for us to be strong and firm regarding our spiritual resolve. Brothers and sisters, I was ready to shout because, and I was ready to blast the sermonic hymn when I say that God expects us to grow when in places that we are not expected. But the truth of the matter is that most species of palm trees, they grow in desert climate. Somebody may be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, what do you mean by that? What I'm saying is that sometimes God places us in not only uh, uh, temperature, but God places us in a climate. In other words, what I'm saying is that sometimes God ordains us to be in dry places. God ordains us to experience some bad times. God ordains us to be places where we might experience distress and we might be depressed. But brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that God gives us what is necessary to be able to flourish even though you are in a desert place. What I'm sharing with you is these particular plants, they are adept at enduring little rainfall. You've got to be adept in enduring little rainfall. If God does not send rain, you ought to still respect the fact that God is God. They're ready to respond to high winds. Brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that God uh, designed you to flourish even in those places uh, that are not conducive to flourishing. Second thing I share with you is that you've got to be deeply rooted to flourish. You've got to be deeply rooted to flourish. Many of us want to want God to deliver us. Many of us want to call upon God uh, when God uh, has something to offer for us. But brothers and sisters, one of the things that I share with you is that for you to flourish even in desert times, you've got to be deeply rooted. Psalmist uses an illustration of a palm tree because one of the instinctive qualities of a palm tree is that it has deep roots. God designed the root system of palm trees different than any others because they reach deep. These big roots make their way deep beneath dry, shifting, backstabbing, unstable sands and lock into the nutrient providing solid foundation below. I, I'm shouting myself, brothers and sisters. What I'm saying is that God has designed us to reach deep uh, past the shallowness of backstabbing sediment. God has designed us to reach deep past those sediments that are unstable. And God has designed us to reach deep so that we can hold on to the rock that is below. How do we strengthen ourselves? We strengthen ourselves through prayer. 
I'll share this with you. Satan tries to limit your praying because he knows that your praying will limit him. I, I want to say if I was at Pleasant Green, I, I, I would say that two or three times. But brothers and sisters, say, brothers and sisters, Satan tries to limit your praying because Satan knows that your praying will limit him. Micah 7 and 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation, and my God will hear me. Brothers and sisters, you've got to be deeply rooted, and one of the ways that you stretch your roots, one of the ways that you get yourself deeply rooted in God is that you pray. Another way you can do that is if you fast. When your roots are deep, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, that you fear the wind. Fasting of the, is, uh, of the physical is nutrients for the spiritual. I want to say that again. Fasting for the physical is nutrients for the the spiritual. Mark 9 and 28 says, and after Jesus had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive out these demons? Jesus answered, this kind cannot come out except through fasting and prayer. Last piece I want to leave you with, brothers and sisters, you can flourish even when it seems like you're out of season. You know, one of the things about, um, I, I call myself having a green thumb. And in having a green thumb, I noticed that uh, there is a time and a season for you to plant seed. There's a time in April, there's a time in May that if you want good green grass in your lawn, you've got to be diligent about planting the seed and if you miss that season you won't get green grass but what i share with you is that brothers and sisters that god can allow you to flourish even when it seems like it's not your season god can allow you uh, to blossom even in the midst of a dry season what I'm saying, what, what, how is that relating to the pleasant parishioners and partners of PG? How is that relating to our virtual visitors? What I'm saying is that, brothers and sisters, what the text says is that you can, you can produce even when you are old. God can take that which you thought was extinct and turn it into an extension. Many times with certain, uh, certain uh, issues in life, brothers and sisters, that we, we think that um, our time is extinct. But God can take uh, what you thought was ex extinct and he can turn it into an extension. You all remember Hezekiah, don't you? I'm not talking about Hezekiah walk up, but for my Bible scholars, I'm talking about Hezekiah in the Bible Hezekiah prayed, he prayed, he prayed, and he got 15 more years added unto his life. And there's so many others that have testimonies that God is able to do things in their lives. God is able uh, to give you what you need even in the midst of drought. And I want to say this, brothers and sisters, as we come to a conclusion, um, God is able uh, to help you to flourish. But in order for you to flourish, you've got to have deep roots. And when you have deep roots, brothers and sisters, you'll be able to flourish and understand this, that God can allow you to flourish even when it is out of season. Ask Sarah. Brothers and sisters, God can allow you to flourish even when it is out of season. The door of the church is open 
the door of the church is open. I pray that you have gotten something out of this lesson, uh, something out of the word of God. Uh, if you desire to be a part of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, uh, I would just suggest to you that you would give, uh, send an email to ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com if you would like to be a part of the church, if you would like to be a part of the church. And if you send an email and would like to be a part of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, brothers and sisters, within 48 hours, someone will respond to you uh, with how uh, to be acclimated to the body of Christ uh, through Pleasant Green. Brothers and sisters, we also want to recognize all of our visitors, all of our visitors. If you are a virtual visitor, we're thankful that you have logged in today. Um, if you get tired of being a visitor, you can always join. And I want to say this, that we are a church uh, who is striving to be pleasantly purposeful for all people. With that being said, I want to say you are welcome. Amen. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Uh, I want to encourage everyone during this season with thankful for your faithfulness. Thank you for uh, thank you, pleasant parishioners, and thank you for our partners of PG. Thank you for virtual visitors. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving. Uh, and I want to share this with you that if you have not given, uh, there is still an opportunity for you to be generous. Uh, you can do that um, by sending a check or a money order uh, to G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can send a check or a money order. Also, brothers and sisters, you can give online. You can give online by going to www.pgmbcstl.org. Uh, and you can give uh, on that platform. We're thankful again for uh, your faithfulness, brothers and sisters. Now, we want to go, uh, we want to pause for prayer uh, for um, the uh, Lord's Supper. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you again for your presence. We thank you for your power. Uh, we thank you for your provisions. Now, God, as we um, partake in the Lord's Supper, uh, God, we pray that uh, we do this worthily. We are not worthy. But God, we pray that we can do this worthily. Let us reflect on ourselves. And if one of us has ought against our brother, God, let us uh, forgive. And Lord God, let us partake in this, your Lord's Supper, worthily. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Scripture shares with us in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, 24th verse, it says, and when he had given thanks and broke it, he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us commune together. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory to the only wise God, 
uh, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May we all say, Amen. Thanks again for stopping by. I pray that something meaningful has been shared with you during uh, the sermonic hour. Uh, brothers and sisters, we pray that all is well. Be careful, wash your hands, and be blessed.